At the end of the last video, I asked you this question, which of the following is guaranteed not to increase power? I hope you saw that only A is true. Decreasing the alpha level, that is from 0.10 to 0.01, will never increase power. Now let's look at the situations and how we can figure out this answer. Now notice what happens when we change alpha. Changing from an alpha of 0.10 to an alpha of 0.01 shifts our critical values out to the tails. And if we look at the diagram with our sampling distributions under the null and the alternative, we can see that shifting from an alpha of 0.10 to an alpha of 0.01, that is making our criterion more strict, disallows the use of certain samples to reject the null. That is, some samples that counted as evidence before will no longer count as evidence if we change our alpha value. This is true whether we have a directional test, whether we specified in the wrong direction, or whether or not the null hypothesis is true. Notice that in the phrasing, guaranteed not to increase power, decreasing the alpha level is the only one. For B, increasing the sample size will increase power if the alternative hypothesis is true. For C, decreasing the population variability will actually increase power when the null hypothesis is false. For D, increasing the size of the effect will increase power if the null hypothesis is false, or in other words, the alternative hypothesis is true. And E, of course, can't be true because some of these will not increase power. So these factors are important to keep in mind when we're actually setting up our hypothesis test. And most of these we can consider when we're setting up the methodology of our experiments. We wanna set up our experiments so that we maximize the chance that we can detect an effect. We don't want to spend all the time running a study if we have a very small probability of actually detecting the effect we're interested in. So remember that we are either on one side of truth in the world. Either there is no effect or there is an effect. And we have to think about the consequences of the decisions we make. Now thinking about the statistical errors, I want to give you one diagram that just helps us lay this out. So a false alarm, that is an alpha error, and a type 2 error, or a beta error. Now let's look at the factors affecting each of these error rates. One factor is in common for both of these errors. That is, the alpha level will affect your type 1 error rate if the null hypothesis is true, and the alpha level will affect your miss rate if the null hypothesis is false. Now, on the type 1 error side, we're actually done. There is only one thing that affects your false alarm rate, and that is your chosen alpha level. Remember, that's why we're statistically comfortable when we reject the null hypothesis. We know, at least if our assumptions are met, that the only thing that affects our false alarm rate is our chosen level of alpha. On the other side, our type 2 error rate is actually under the control of many factors. So that is the effect size, the variance in the population, our sample size, and whether we're using directional hypotheses. But again, notice that alpha level is the only factor that's shared between our type 1 and type 2 errors. Alpha level will affect both of these.